Covering news where you live, this is 5 News. Well, thank you for joining us here today for the latest news and weather where you live. I'm Joe Ellison. And I'm Tiffany Lee. Emergency managers across our area are monitoring the impacts from barrel in our area. Yeah, they're urging everyone just be careful, especially if you're going to be out there driving. Flash flooding is the biggest concern from all this rain. It's also the hardest to see, of course, when it's dark, especially in areas where there are no street lights. According to the National Weather Service, most flash flooding deaths happen when people drive into high floodwaters. Emergency managers say it's never worth risking your life and your property to try to drive through water, especially when it can be much deeper than you realize. Whenever you cross those roads, you may get across the first time or whenever you come back through, if you have are returning home, you could get in trouble whenever you go to cross because that water could be rising and you don't know it. All right, avoid those areas that are prone to flooding the most. You can also call in areas you come across that have flooded so police can block them off to protect other drivers. Well, our weather team has been tracking this rain as it moves through. Let's check in with Zach to see what the forecast looks like for today. All right, for our Tuesday, that rain, it's not lingering uh, much longer. Again, we saw plenty of showers build in through the day on Monday, Monday evening, Monday night, widespread rainfall. As we got into the day uh, here Tuesday, we had that back edge working through by mid morning. The brunt of the activity is gone. We're opening up with sunshine. We'll start to dry out. That flood threat will go away, but good soaking across the area. Uh, highs in the 80s for your Tuesday will be clear, quiet 60s overnight, and then it's all about the heat through the rest of the work weekend into the weekend temperatures for tomorrow. Your Wednesday are going to be sitting around 90 degrees. Could have those heat alerts uh, coming back into the forecast late weekend into early next week. Ladies. All right, thanks for that, Zach. Well, leaders in Fayetteville are one step closer to allowing alcohol sales on Sundays. The issue made a big step after the group Keep Our Dollars in Fayetteville submitted enough signatures to the city clerk. City Council and Quorum Court are expected to talk about this proposed rule in separate meetings today. We'll keep you posted on what happens. Meanwhile, county services at the Benton County Rogers office have reopened, including the assessor, the collector, and the clerk's satellite offices. They have been shut down since the tornadoes back in May. Leaders say that they had to deal with a bunch of roof and water damage to the buildings, but everything is now back up and running. The closest location before this that was open where the assessor and collector was in Bentonville, and that has been a very, very busy the last month. According to their Facebook page, the state portion of the building that includes a DMV is still not open. So far, no word on when that office plans to open back up. Well, the Clarksville City Council is getting the ball rolling on a multi-million dollar project. The council voted to rezone a piece of land for a new data center. It's a building that's basically housing data to support the digital world. While some residents had concerns about the noise, more information was provided about the project. 5 News reporter Lauren Spencer has those details. We always had an idea to make it like a subdivision or like create more houses over there, make it residential area. So we never really thought that it would be rezoned for an industrial use. Harriet Reese, who's an heir to the property, found out a week ago about the rezoning and became an advocate to stop it. Facebook moves a lot of information pretty fast. She went into Monday night's meeting with lots of questions about the potential data center plan. What kind of generator they're going to use to supply their power if the electricity went out and is that going to release a bunch of pollution into the air? What kind of cooling system are they going to be using? Are they going to be using fans? Her biggest concern, how noisy this could be as the land sits by a hospital and an assisted living facility and the rumor going around, is this a crypto mining operation? But Steve Hauserman, economic developer for the city, says neither are true. Hyperscale data centers and crypto mining facilities are completely different worlds. They are not going to build something that's going to create a bunch of noise and be a nuisance to the community. They're, they're, they're putting a lot of money into these things. They're sound suppression systems. It makes a big difference between whether you're air-cooled or water-cooled. Water yeah, an air-cooled data center is going to have humongous fans running. These aren't air-cooled, they're water-cooled. The council voted to rezone the property. Our over a billion dollar economic development project here is huge. Representative Aaron Pilkington says this will be the first hyperscale data center in the state. We get to keep jobs in Arkansas, means we get to keep money in Arkansas, and then we get to bring in new tax revenue too 
places like Clarksville and Johnson County so that we can then turn around and reinvest that into our communities and help them grow. And a project like this will allow them to keep homegrown talent in Arkansas. The best uh, state in the nation when it comes to computer sciences, if we're creating that workforce, we should be utilizing them here in Arkansas. In Clarksville, covering news where you live, Lauren Spencer, 5 News. All right, well, thank you for joining us here on this Tuesday for the latest news and weather where you live. You can find us back here tomorrow for more. Have a great day.